Hey guys, welcome to my sewing room. In today's episode of how to make a wedding dress, I'll be showing you guys how to make this really pretty flower girl dress. Now today's video will be video one of many videos on how to make a flower girl dress. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when I post new flower girl and wedding dress videos. And in light of me making it to my 100 subscribers, yay! <laughs> I will have this pattern that I'm working on today available for download for free uh, for my subscribers down below in the description box. So make sure to go ahead and click the link down there, cut your pattern out, tape it back together, and let's get started. Okay, so to start off, you're gonna need five yards of fabric for your face. I'm using a matte satin here and the link will be below in the description box. Then I'm going to underline with a white muslin as always. And I have five yards of that as well. And you also need five yards of a lining fabric. I'm gonna put the link in the description box for that as well. Okay, so I got all my fabrics laid out and I actually folded it on the cross rise grade so that I wouldn't have to cut a separate piece for that face skirt. So this is five yards, it's more than enough to make two gowns front. Okay, so to start off, I need my bodice front, my modesty panel, my bodice back, my bodice strap, and my bow. I'm gonna go ahead and interface them. Now that I have them interfaced, I'm gonna go ahead and get them ready for underlining. So I'm just showing you all the pieces, just the same pieces as before. Here is my bodice front piece, and I have my underlining underneath my interfaced satin piece, and I'm gonna go ahead and underline it. If you guys need a more detailed tutorial on how to underline, I have a video up on my channel. I'm gonna put the link here in the cards, so go ahead and pause this video and check that out and then come back. Okay, so now that I have my bodice front piece underlined, I'm gonna do the same for my back pieces and my straps. So now that I have them all done, I'm gonna go ahead and start assembling. I'm pinning my back pieces to my front pieces right sides together, and I'm also pinning the strap pieces onto the front as well, oh, and the back, and I'm matching my notches. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin those. Notice that I'm matching the notches. There's a double notch for the back and a single notch for the front, so that's how I know how to line up my pieces. Since I'm here at my sewing table, I'm also gonna start pinning the bow pieces. I'm pinning them the short ways, but make sure you pin them the long way so that you have the same bow as me in the end. And do that also to the, the other bow piece as well. I'm also gonna work on the modesty panel pieces. These are the small pieces and I ended up not using them. I made them a lot bigger. So the pattern that you actually um, download will have the bigger pieces. I'm also going to work on my corset loop. I'm putting it right sides together and I'm going to sew a centimeter seam allowance for that. These are my bow tails. I'm putting those right sides together as well. I'm working on my corset lacing. I'm sewing a centimeter seam allowance for all of the pieces that I assembled. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew my, my side seams, both side seams. I'm also going to sew the straps on. Now the straps are drafted as rectangle and the pieces on the bodice that they attach to are curves. So make sure to sew, sew the curves in. And I'm also sewing the modesty panel, making sure to leave a gap so that I can turn the modesty panel right side out. is the bow like I said I folded it long ways I liked it better this way and I'm sewing it together right sides together with a centimeter seam allowance and I'm doing that for both bow pieces now that I have that done I'm going to sew together all of the loops the loops are the corset loops the corset lacing the bow middle and the bow tails. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew all those right sides together with a centimeter seam allowance. Mm -hmm. 
for the bow tails, I'm gonna make sure to stop about an inch from the bottom, pivot my needle and sew down to the edge at an angle. You wanna make sure that you have your bodice assembled, your bow tails, your corset loops, your corset lacing, your modesty panel, your bow middle, and your bow pieces. And since my fabric frays like crazy, I'm going to pink all of my seams. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn my bow pieces right side out. And I'm just showing you um, how they would look, how it will look when you fold it in half. And this will essentially be our bow. And I'm gonna go ahead and give that a good press, making sure that the seam is in the middle. And I'm also pressing my bodice side seams open. And I'm making sure to press my strap pieces towards the bodice. Okay, so my next step is to sew a stay stitch. I'm sewing a centimeter away from the edge and I'm sewing that all around the bodice piece, including the straps and the armhole areas. The purpose of the stay stitch is to keep the neckline from stretching and it also serves as a good line or a good guideline for me to be able to turn down the seam allowance to sew it down to the underlining. The next step is to measure down a piece of boning. You wanna go under the centimeter seam allowance there and over the centimeter seam allowance for the zipper. I'm using a quarter inch or eight millimeter um, wriggling boning here, but I later switched it to the 12 millimeter. And I'm gonna go ahead and take my loops that I turned out and I'm gonna pin that to my boning space to half an inch apart. If you guys have any questions or you want an in detail tutorial on how to make corset loops, Give this video a thumbs up and comment down below and I'll be more than happy to make an in detail tutorial for you guys. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew that to my bodice pieces. I'm sewing two rows of stitches. After we've done that, you wanna go ahead and slash uh, the top of the seam allowance where the zipper will go, just so when we apply the zipper, it turns in easily. And I'm gonna go ahead and slash the underarm seams as well so those can turn in smoothly. Here I'm gonna go ahead and catch stitch down my seam allowance to my underlining just to keep everything nice and neat and flat. And I'm also going to catch stitch down all of my seam allowance around the neckline, including the sleeves. If you're liking this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already yet, and give this video a big thumbs up so I can know to keep creating more sewing videos like this. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I do a fair bit of hand sewing, and let me tell you, my hands are worn out. They are hurting. So my question of the day is, what do you guys do to relieve the pain in your hands from hand sewing or working with your hands in general? Leave a comment down below and let me know.
Moving on, I'm going to go ahead and sew the side seams of my skirt pieces. I'm going to sew that I'm putting them right sides together and I'm sewing them with a centimeter seam allowance and I'm going to assemble my lining the same way. Now that I have them assembled, I'm going to go ahead and put them together. I'm putting them together wrong side to wrong side, matching up all of the seam lines. And I'm going to make sure to pin at each seam line. And now I'm going to go ahead and sew these together with a one centimeter seam allowance, making sure that I leave about a five inch hole um, in the seam to make sure that I can turn my fabric white side out when I finish the hem. And these fabrics are the same, or I mean, I'm sorry, the patterns are the same, but I still had to do quite a bit of easing here. From the right side of the fabric, I'm turning it inward one centimeter to the wrong side, and I'm putting my hand through the gap that we left, and I'm pinching that seam allowance, and I'm using that to turn it wrong side out. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew those together with a one centimeter seam allowance. Now keep in mind, the lining is about two centimeters shorter than the face so there will be quite a bit of easing here but if you take your time it will work the main thing is to match up all of your side seams and the center back seam so that you know your pieces are aligned correctly and then you just ease the fullness between them and now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the pieces right side out and I'm closing the top edge that we left open. And this is what it looks like. Now it's important to go ahead at this point and give this piece a good press all the way up. Next step is to do the pleats. Now it's gonna be really hard for me to explain the pleats so you can either just watch and follow along or the pattern pieces actually have a uh, all the pleats marked in the directions that the pleats go you can follow along with the pattern now pretty much it's a inverted box pleat and then on the center front and then it's a double knife pleat on either side of that and then there's a pleat coming from this the side back that goes and covers the side seam onto the front and then two more knife pleats facing the center back And I'm going to secure that with a roll of stitching. After I've done that, it's time to attach the bodice to the skirt. And it took a little bit of easing as well because I kind of changed the pattern of pleating so it didn't exactly match up with the bodice piece. But like everything else, you know, we make it work. And I'm going to go ahead and sew that together with a one centimeter seam allowance. And since my fabric is fraying like crazy again, I'm going to go ahead and pink that seam. And that's what it looks like. So the next step would be to insert the zipper. I ended up not using the zipper because when I did a fitting, my measurements were wrong somehow and, um, and the skirt part did not fit my little girl. So I had to rip out the zipper and put in a full corset back, which was fine. And it ended up looking like this. And I also had to extend the modesty panel. So I made it a little bit bigger. And the uh, pattern that I have for download has this version and it also has the version with the zipper so you can go ahead and choose which one you want i sewed the it down with the half an inch boning and i also added a half an inch boning in the side seams where the princess seams would be to make sure that the sweetheart neckline stays up because when i did the fitting it was drooping a little bit and i wanted to make sure that my daughter was covered all the way for the beaded portion you're going to need some Swarovski crystals some sequins assorted beads i'll link those down below and a thread and some scissors and a really small needle now it will be really hard for me to explain how to, to bead this just because it would take the whole video's length to explain how i did this pattern so if you guys want um a detailed video on how i did this beading pattern then leave a comment down below and i'll try to make a dedicated video on how i do my hand beading but the pattern is pretty much a crystal 
and then uh, two of the elongated beads and then two of the round beads with the sequins at the bottom and then it goes down with two more of the elongated beads I'm not sure what they're called I apologize <laughs> and then there's a crystal at the bottom and it just kind of repeats itself over and over again now I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the bow I'm making I'm putting these the pieces right sides together and I'm sewing them on both sides right sides together with a centimeter seam allowance now I'm finding the center which would be where the seams at and I'm gonna go ahead and pleat it down and secure it with the bow center and so this is what the bow looks like once it's created and I also have the tails that we did earlier now I'm gonna go ahead and attach the tails to the bow piece I'm just gonna hand sew them on, folding down the seam allowance there at the top so there's no raw edges showing. And I'm just gonna go ahead and sew those on. Now, I, not really, I'm not really proud of this bow. I know I can do better, but you know. So next is the lining, which is finally the last step. I assembled the lining, how we assembled the bodice, and I also did the stay stitch all the way around, and then I ironed the seam allowance down, and now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, slip stitch down my lining to my bodice piece. And there you go, we have a beaded sweetheart neckline with off the shoulder sleeves and it is fully lined from top to bottom. It has a corset back with a modesty panel and a beautiful bow at the it's bottom. It's definitely not 100% perfect, but I'm very proud on how it turned out and I cannot wait to make this design again. Thank you guys for watching my video. I truly appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button before you leave if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in my next one.